Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving or simplifying an expression with radicals. In other words, we're going to find square roots of complex numbers and now we're going to simplify this rational expression. Okay? Now, if you're new to complex numbers, go in and check out my lecture videos. I made a bunch of videos going over basics of complex numbers. If you have any questions, feel, feel free to ask in the comment section down below. I'm pretty sure someone will answer. I also have another channel that focuses mainly on algebra and number theory and hopefully some geometry in the near future. Check it out. Cyber math, cyber with an S. Okay, so how do we simplify an expression like this? By the way, let me tell you, before I get into uh, the details of the problem, I got to tell you that this was not the original plan. First of all, I thought about this problem in a different way, such as I said, okay, if the square root of 3 plus 4i equals a plus pi, then what is the square root of negative 8 plus 6i in terms of a and b? Of course, the goal is not just finding the square root of a complex number, but being able to associate it with the square root of another complex number that is related. And I'll show you how related they are. Okay? So, our goal is not to find a numerical answer, but more like something in terms of a plus bi, or a and b. In other words, something like maybe 2a minus 2b. I'm just guessing, by the way. Obviously, that's not the answer. Okay, you get the idea? Hopefully that makes sense. But then why did I change the plan? Because that problem didn't look good. I made a thumbnail and it didn't really look good. You know, the th thumbnail is supposed to look good, right? And I hope it does look good. If it doesn't, let me know. I'm always open to improvements. And if you have any suggestions, always, always feel free to make them. Okay, don't hesitate. So how do you simplify a radical expression? In more than one way, for sure. So let me present two methods and let's start with the first method. Okay, so we're going to be dividing a radical by another radical. So I might as well just find the square root of these numbers. Wait, how do you find the square root of negative 8 plus 6i? Hmm, I can set it to a, a plus bi, but we already did for this one. Fine, I can do x plus yi. Let's do it. Square both sides. And then put this on the left, x squared minus y squared, because i squared is negative 1. Don't forget that. And plus 2xyi equals negative 8 plus 6i. Here, the real part is the real part, so it's negative 8. And this is supposed to equal 6. So xy is equal to 3, x squared minus y squared is equal to negative 8. How do we solve a system like this? There's a, quite a few ways to do it. Math is full of different methods, right? You can isolate y, plug it in here, and then try to solve for that. Or you can do this. You can try to associate this one and this one, and they're related. If you know the identities from algebra, that'll be super helpful. But if you take a plus b squared and a minus b squared and subtract them, you get 4ab. In other words, you get 4x squared y squared. Nice. This gives us x squared plus y squared squared minus this number squared, which is 64, equals this number squared times 4. Square the 3, 9, multiply by 4, you get 36. Add the 64, ta-da, you get a perfect square, and that's just perfect. Remember, x and y are supposed to be real. That's how we define a complex number in the form of x plus yi, which is the standard form. There's also a polar form, like I said earlier, Check out the lecture videos. So, since x and y are real, x squared plus y squared cannot be negative 10. Make sense? Let me make that clear. It can't be negative 10. No, two, no squares are negative, right? So, there some can't be negative either. So, we're going to go with this, which is nice, because we have another equation that can accompany that. And together, they make a really nice pair. How? Add them up and divide by 2. That's going to give you x squared, so that's going to be like 1. From here, x can be 1 or negative 1. And of course, you can just plug it in. 1, 10 minus 1 is 9. y can be 3 or negative 3. But wait a minute. When x is 1, we got to be careful. 
because we have another equation that we need to use. X, Y is three, so we might as well use that original one because we squared things and, you know, it's kind of gotten crazy. So if X is one, Y is three because X, Y is positive three, remember that. And if X is negative one, Y is equal to negative three. Otherwise, you're gonna go with uh, impossible scenarios, okay? What does that mean? It just means that X and Y are well known in other words, the square root of, what was I square rooting? I forgot. Negative 8 plus 6i, and that is 1 plus 3i, or negative 1 minus 3i. But guess what? We are looking for the principal value, which is this one, the one with the positive real part. Make sense? We have to be clear. It needs to be well-defined. That's why we're going to go with this. Okay. How do I find the square root of the other number before I get to it? Let me tell you something. You could also find the square root of this number in a different way, which is a lot easier. But of course, this is a very special number. And how is that? We can write this as 1 minus 9 plus 6i. And then minus 9 can be written as the square of 3i. And this can be written as 2 times 1 times 3i. You get the idea? This gives us a perfect square, which is 1 plus 3i quantity squared and you have to square root it which gives us 1 plus 3i again you have to go with the principal square root so that you're always consistent make sense great so that gives us the same answer let's go ahead and take a look at the other one now what's the square root of 3 plus 4i let's find it in an easy way we can again write this as 1 plus 4i minus 4 and then this will become 1 plus 2 times 1 times 2i and this is 2i quantity squared. Again, we have the perfect square, 1 plus 2i quantity squared. So this is 1 plus 2i. Uh-oh. We didn't really get anything nice, did we? Maybe I made a mistake. Okay, is it supposed to be 3 plus 4i, by the way? Let me check. Yeah, it is supposed to be that way. And negative 8 plus 6i gave me what? Let me check. 1 plus 3i. Okay, so now we have the following right? Was it like that? I'm not exactly sure. Maybe I meant it the other. Oh, 3 plus 4i. Never mind. It's not 4 plus 3i. That's different. 3 plus 4i. And now this was 1 plus 3i. This is 1 plus 2i. How do you simplify that? Well, you could probably leave it like that or multiply by the conjugates. 1 minus 2i, 1 minus 2i. And this will give you, if you multiply 1 minus 2i plus 3i minus 6i squared, which is plus 6, divided by 1 squared plus 2 squared, which is 5. It's going to be 7 plus i divided by 5. Okay, so that kind of gave me a definite answer, which is something that I wasn't really looking for. Maybe I made a mistake somewhere. Could quite possible, right? Let me go ahead and proceed with my second method, because second method is probably going to give us something different, okay? But let me check the original problem one more time. It is supposed to be the square root of negative 8 plus 6i. It is square root of negative 6. Wait a minute. I forgot. <laughs> Very forgetful, right? Negative 8 plus 6i. Never mind. It starts with negative 8. Oops. The answer was right there. And the other one is 3 plus 4i, right? Awesome. So here's what we're going to do instead. I'm going to put those under the same radical because I can, right? That's the cool thing about the uh, method. And then I'm going to go ahead and write the negative 8 as negative 1 as i squared. So I'm going to write this as 8i squared plus 6i and this one as 3 plus 4i. And then I should be able to take out a 2i here. That gives me 4i plus 3 and 3 plus 4i. And then when I cancel these out, I should end up with the square root of 2i. Guess what that is equal to? The square root of 2i is equal to 1 plus i, because if you square 1 plus i, you get 1 squared plus i squared plus 2i, but i squared is negative 1, so I end up with 2i. That's why the answer is supposed to be 1 plus i, but why did I not get that? With the first method, I probably made a mistake, and that's for you to find out. But I think, I think, when I square 1 plus 2i, wait a minute, isn't that 2 plus i? Hmm. Let me check. Oh, yes, it's not supposed to be negative 3. Oh, here's, here's the mistake. I found it. Oh, sorry, I didn't leave it for you. 
but this is basically 1 plus uh, 2 times 1 times 2i and this is 2i squared. Yes, it was supposed to be 1 plus 2i, not 2 plus. Wait, am I making the same mistake? Oh, it's 4 plus 1, never mind. Okay, over and over I'm making the same mistake. So this is supposed to be 2i. Hmm. That's a good question. Anyways, you figure it out. I couldn't. <laughs> All right. So this brings us to the end of this video. It's embarrassing, right? Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.